I first went there when I was 20 in 1955, and uh, it was then that I met Andreas Lommel, who was uh, copying uh, Wanjana paintings at Gib River. And I so fell in love with the area that I returned there with uh, my son Peter in 1981, and again in uh, 1989 with Damon de Laszlo and uh, in 91 with Robert Hefner. And it was on the Robert Hefner trip that we had Dr. Graham Walsh as a guide to show us Wanjana paintings. And while we were actually um, sitting around the campfire one night, Graham started to talk about the Bradshaw paintings. And Robert and I uh, were simply intrigued by what he was saying, but also it came back to me that when I was with Peter in 1981, we had found some very strange uh, paintings that uh, were not Wanjana and of a type that I'd never seen before. And it transposed that this they were actually brand shorts. So having talked to Graham, I then um, decided that uh, it would be a very good idea to put together an expedition uh, so that we could see as many Bradshaw paintings as, as possible in a short as possible time as well um, with uh, a group of my friends. I got six friends, uh, one of them being Dr. Graham Walsh, and we all decided, all agreed to put in so much money and we hired two helicopters and spent a week flying around the Kimberleys at 100 miles an hour, 50 feet off the ground with the doors off and we saw at least 100 different sites that Graham showed us. And the outcome at the end of that flight was that we were all so flabbergasted by the excellence of the art that I proposed that uh, if Graham agreed to write the text and allowed us to use his photographs, we would produce a book. And they agreed and this book is the outcome of that expedition. So it has a hundred colour plates, a hundred silhouettes like this, showing the uh, Bradshaw paintings and uh, Graham, the photographs and the silhouettes were done by Graham and he also wrote the text. I've mentioned the fact that the uh, Kimberleys are a really rough country and from the photographs you will see that the uh, red rock is um, all horizontal. In fact, I've got a lump of it here. It's sand laid down under the sea and extremely hard. Now the interesting thing about the Bradshaw paintings is that they are quite different to the Wanjana paintings. The Wanjana paintings are, actually have painting on the rock. The Bradshaw paintings were done, and nobody knows how, but these fine figures were done with a pigment that was taken into the rock, and you can scrub the, scrub the rock and the paintings, you can't affect the paintings. So, we've got lost here. <laughs> the actual rocks that you see are sandstone that has turned to quartz, and you can see the, rip, the ripples that have laid down under the sea, and if you... Very, very hard rock. And the extraordinary thing about this is that the Bradshaw paintings were done with a pigment that was absorbed into this rock so that you can now go along and scrub them with a scrubbing brush and it won't affect the painting at all. Whereas the Wanjana paintings are just ochres that have been painted on with fingers or chewed sticks and are paint on rock and are slowly disappearing. The Bradshaws are there for eternity. The interesting thing about uh, the Bradshaw paintings is that they are actually impossible to date because there is nothing 
no substance that we can take off the rock to carbon date or anything like that. In with the Ronchino paintings, we can. We can take paint off and we can date the carbon that was used in within the paint and get a date. The Bradshaw paintings, that is impossible. The problem has been solved very cleverly by Dr. Graham Walsh. He found a old Bradshaw painting because he's been able to put these paintings into sequence and one of the oldest ones, which happened to be the best by the way, happened to have a mud wasp nest over part of it. Now mud, the mud wasps build their nests on exactly the same spot every year and uh, the, so the inside of the nest becomes fossilized and he was able to get one of these fossilized wasp nests off the wall and the scientists have been able to date when the nest was put down by the wasps over the top of the Bradshaw painting. The date is 17 and a half thousand years old. From the artistic point of view, the interesting thing about that date, if it is correct, is that that is when the paintings of Lasker have been dated to. So whoever was painting the Bradshaw paintings in the Kimberley, the uh, prehistoric people of um, France were painting the Lascaux caves. The interesting thing is that all the French paintings are about animals and Lascaux is, has one human figure in it but it's just, just a kind of lowery stick figure. And even the paintings that uh, were found at um, Chauvet, which again you can see on the Branshaw site, which are twice the age of Lascaux, at 35,000 years old, only, there is only one human fertility goddess figure. When you look at the Branshaw paintings on the website, you have to look at them in this light. They are the oldest, sophisticated, figurative paintings in the world. And this is what makes them so unique. They are unbelievably beautiful.
John. <coughs> Wet. My first impression. <laughs> it's uh, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Awe inspiring. The oldest paintings, to see the oldest paintings in existence, just quite breathtaking. The whole atmosphere of the of the cave and the yeah. it's this the talent, you know, as an artist myself, being able to um, see such talent thirty two thousand years ago really is um, quite breathtaking. <laughs> I mean, perspective, shading, uh, the uh, such realistic, um, figurative representation. Uh, we're looking at the horses. We around the the line of the black. You can see that they've actually engraved to highlight the line to sharpen it, because. By, you know, with the stomping effect, you'd have a slightly blurred line, so they've actually sharpened the line that runs around the chin and things. It's just, yes, it's quite incredible. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> it's it's um, quite beyond me, quite beyond me, shattering. I've seen, I've seen, been to Lasco and uh, you know, Neo and um, places like that, uh, you know, 17,000 years ago, and, and then to see double that time and better paintings. I mean, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Makes us feel that big, or maybe that big. <laughs> the cows? Yes, the panneau des chevaux. I think that's uh, that's the main one. That one. Oh, the dawn. Chagall. Oui, ça c'est le grand tauroc, juste à oui. à droite de chevaux. Whenever you you copy something, you start to learn the the flow of the lines and the the symmetry, the symmetry in this painting with the the two there and the horses here and then the fighting by the composition of this whole panel is full of symmetry mm. different scenes different purposes different feelings and then you as you go uh, past the horses into the uh, throat of this of the uh, sorcerer or the lion chamber and you look down this tunnel it's like looking down a throat mm. and it's it's just draws you down. It's just magic, absolutely magic. It's arrogant to think, as Chauvet proves, that we believe uh, we found everything. No, no, sure, you've, sure, you've, sure. you've put paintings well, Chauvet, back seventeen thousand years. <laughs> not quite, not quite. But Chauvet is, is very late <laughs> in human evolution. No, 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 no. But. What I'm saying is, Chauvet has completely overturned all the concepts. Mm, some, some. Well, yes. some. 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 Yeah, some. But the evolutionary ones of. Yes, about the evolution of art, yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But this. That's a very important. Yes, but there were hints before. There, there were, were hints, hints before. Yeah, but now you have evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there was evidence before with the German statuettes. Yes. That were upwards yes. of 30,000. Yes. yes. And uh, myself, I wrote, Marshak said it years and years ago. And uh, myself, I remember writing an article a year or two, publishing an article a year or two before Chauvet was published, uh, and uh, saying that very broadly, I mean, the development of art was not as simple as that, etc., because of the German statuette. Mm. Because if the people could do such uh, intricate carving on portable art, they could do uh, art in two dimensions also. Mm. Yes, I, I think that, that um, the, Ch the Chauvet Cave has produced more evidence for what a lot of people already believe, yes. because there already yes. was yes, evidence right, for yeah. it. Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, exactly, but exactly, when, yes. When, when it was, uh, let's say, a very spectacular confirmation oh. of what a number of people had said already. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue. Thank you. 